This video focuses on the t-confidence interval for the population mean. Like the uh, z-confidence interval, which we've addressed earlier in the class, the t-confidence interval for the population mean is based upon a sampling distribution of the mean. In particular, if three conditions are true, which are, let me get my pen ready, there we go, you have to have a random sample of size n, so it's got to be a random sample. The sample size is greater than 30 or, like the z-confidence interval, or the population is known to be normally distributed, and the standard deviation of the population is unknown. That's what's different between the z-interval and the t-interval. With the z-interval, the standard deviation of the population is known. With the t with the t interval, what we're doing is constructing a confidence interval, estimating a population mean, when the standard deviation of the population is unknown. What's important about this, this is probably about 95% of what statisticians do, because rarely do you know the standard deviation of the population. So if those three conditions are true, then the standard deviation or excuse me, then the distribution of the sample means, the sampling distribution, has the mean that's equal to the population mean, has a standard error, a standard deviation, that's equal to the following expression, s, which is the standard deviation of the sample over the square root of n. Recall that for the z interval, that standard deviation is sigma over the square root of n. But in this case, we don't know sigma. So we replace it with our best guess, which is s, the, the sample standard deviation. And if, again, if those conditions are met, the distribution follows what's called a t-distribution. A t-distribution is nearly normal, as you'll see in just a few minutes, but not quite. Also, the t-distribution varies according to the sample size. The particular t-distribution we use is the sample size minus 1. That's called the degrees of freedom. Now, back to the z-interval. For the z-interval, remember the z-confidence interval, we, we, it was based on the fact that we could capture 95 or 90 or 99 percent of our data between two values. So between negative 1.96 standard deviations and 1.96 standard deviations, and I'll circle those, between 1.96 standard deviations below the mean and 1.96 standard deviations above the mean, we call those our z-confidence values, we captured 95% of our data. Okay, For the 99% it was 2.576 standard deviations. For the t now, So let's take a look at how the t and z differ. For the t, I'm going to a different applet here, hold on a second. Okay, so the red distribution here is the normal. The blue distribution is the t distribution. Notice it's a little bit flatter. First of all, it is. It looks very close to being normal. It's symmetric. It's bell-shaped. It's almost normal, but the normal is always the normal. It never changes. The t, as you'll see here, changes depending on the degrees of freedom or depending on the sample size. As the sample size increases, the t gets closer and closer to the normal. For small sample sizes, the t is a fair amount flatter. There's, in other words, there's more area, more. So there's a kind of the extreme case. There's more area down in the tails of the distribution, and less in the center. Now, so let me go back to my PowerPoint. Okay, so you can no longer use these values from the normal because we don't have a normal distribution. Our x bars, our sampling distribution, is no longer normal. It follows a t. So the number of standard deviations you need to go up and down changes. And that is given by our t-confidence table. So our t-confidence table, and for example, if you have um, 13 degrees of freedom, let me get to my pen back again. 13 degrees of freedom right there, which is for a sample size of 14, the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So if you have a sample size of 14, it would be 14 minus 1, which equals 13 degrees of freedom. So the sample, the, the x bar follows a t distribution with 13 degrees of freedom. You need to go up 
2.160 standard deviations on each side to capture 95% of the data. This is called a T confidence value. If you had a 48 degrees of freedom, so a sample size of 49, you, you need to go up and down 2.011 standard deviations. So you see, for every degrees of freedom, how many standard deviations you need to go up and down. Your T confidence value, let me make it a little better see there, changes. All right, so just like the, just like the Z confidence, we're some percent confident that the population mean is within these T confidence standard deviations of the mean. Um, just like the Z, we started X bar for our T confidence value, or T confidence interval, and go down some T confidence and number of standard deviations of the standard deviations, which are S over the square root of N. So the bottom limit is X bar minus T confidence times S over the square root of N. The top limit is X bar plus T confidence times the standard deviation over the square root of N. The validity conditions, like the validity conditions for the Z confidence, random sample, sample size greater than 30 or the population is known to be normal, and the standard deviation of the population is unknown. And uh, as we did with the Z, uh, you'll have to explain these in the context of the problem. So let's take a look at a particular problem. Okay, so here's the problem. Um, estimating a uh, number of unoccupied seats on flights. So uh, to estimate the number of unoccupied seats per flight, one airline randomly selects 50 flights and notes the number of unoccupied seats on each flight. The mean number of unoccupied seats on these 50 flights is 11.6. Okay, so that would be your X bar. 50 would be your N, your sample size. With a standard deviation, again, note for these 50 flights of 4.1. Okay, so that would be your S. It's a standard deviation, not of a number of uh, unoccupied seats on all flights, but on these 50 flights. That makes it a T confidence, uh, T confidence interval. Using 99% interval, confidence interval, to estimate the mean number of unoccupied seats on all flights. So again, we've kind of circled the information. Sample mean is 11.6. Uh, sample size is 50. Uh, so with a sample size of 50, the degrees of freedom is n minus 1, which is 50 minus 1, which is 49 degrees of freedom. So that's the t curve we're using. Uh, so we know the standard deviation, the s is 4.1. Uh, because we have the standard deviation of the sample rather than the population, that's why we use a T confidence interval. Okay, for 99% and agree degrees of freedom of 49, uh, let me go back. I think that might be on the little snippet of the table that I have. Again, this is your T confidence table. 49 degrees of freedom, there it is. Um, 99% uh, confident, 2.68 standard deviations up and down. Okay, so 2.68 standard deviations below, 2.68 standard deviations above. That is our T confidence value. Okay, so the T confidence value is 2.68. Uh, as you did with other uh, confidence interval problems, show me the formula right there with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Plug in the values. When you do the math, you get a bottom limit of 10.05, a top limit of 13.15, and just like the Z confidence interval, what you've got to do, go to the next slide, um, is you've got to interpret the interval. So again, interpretation is give me the confidence level, give me the parameter being estimated, essentially what's the mu that you're trying to estimate in this case it's a mean um, and give me the calculated limits so from part one we had upper and lower limits of 10.05 and 13.15 so our interpretation we're 99 percent confident that the mean number of unoccupied seats on all flights for this airline not just the 50 that we selected but on all flights is between 10.05 and 13.15 seats. Now the validity 
Again, discussing it in the context of the problem. Okay, so we have a random sample of 50 flights. And let me go back and just, just double check that. As I've said, you want to make sure that it's not just always yes, things are valid, but check. Uh, yes, okay, so you see here, we go to the blue, we have a random sample of 50 flights. All right, so we've got a random sample of 50 flights. The number of flights selected, 50, is greater than 30. That was our second condition. And the standard deviation of the number of unoccupied seats on all flights, that would be the population. So don't just say the standard deviation of the population, but what is it? It's the standard deviation of the number of unoccupied seats on all flights is unknown. But we do know the standard deviation of the number of unoccupied seats on the 50 flights in the sample. And because we have those three conditions, random sample, sample size bigger than 30, standard deviation known, unknown, the sampling distribution is a t-distribution, and the confidence interval procedure is valid.